Hey everyone, this is Nick and Linux Mint 21 Vanessa was released a few days ago. And as always, it comes in three main editions. The main one with Cinnamon, one with XFCE and one with Mate, which is basically GNOME 2 but better. While the updates in Mint 21 are mostly incremental and there's nothing groundbreaking in any of the three editions of Mint 21, there are still a ton of things to talk about. But we also need to talk about the elephant in the room. With such a slow pace of updates, how long can Linux Mint keep its best Linux distro for beginners crown? And how long can your servers run without today's sponsor? Check them out to extend the life cycle of your servers, but also your applications. Thanks to Tuxcare for sponsoring this video. If you've ever worked on a project using PHP, you know how frustrating it is to know that the version you're using is going end of life and that you're gonna have to upgrade to it quickly with a bunch of refactoring and code rewrites. Well, Tuxcare can now help you to plan that transition thanks to their PHP extended lifecycle support. With that new service, you can keep your existing code base and still receive security updates and patches to PHP, even if it's no longer officially supported. This means that if your code base still meets your operational requirements, it can also still meet your security requirements, and you get some more time to plan the transition. If you want to learn more about Tuxcare's PHP extended lifecycle support, you can click on the link in the description below. Okay, so whatever the edition you choose, Cinnamon, Mate, XFC, there are some common under the hood elements. So let's begin with those. All Mint editions use the Linux kernel 5.15, which is an LTS release, just like Mint 21 itself. So you can expect your distro to be supported until 2027. They're also all based on Ubuntu 22.04, so they have the same base repos and packages as that LTS distro, and this base will stay with Mint until 2024, at which point they will start using Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, I would presume. Unless they finally decide to make Linux Mint Debian Edition the default base and drop Ubuntu entirely, but I don't think that has been decided yet. You also get IPP support, which is driverless printing and scanning which means most printers and scanners will not require any drivers to be installed, which is always a nice experience on Linux. So, in the end, whatever the edition you pick, you'll get access to the same software and repos, and so your choice is mainly just the desktop environment you prefer. Okay, now that this is out of the way, let's begin with the main one, the desktop environment most people will actually choose, which is Cinnamon. So, the big update here is the Window Manager. It's called Muffin, and it always has been a fork of Mutter, the GNOME window manager. At least, it's been for the past 11 years. Muffin is now based on Mutter 3.36, and that brought it much closer to the upstream than previously. Why is that important? Well, it means that the Mint team will spend a lot less time trying to backport stuff and trying to maintain stuff. They can just benefit from all upstream improvements way faster with minimal work. This means that a few things have changed in Mint 21 Cinnamon, notably the display settings, which are now backported from GNOME to Cinnamon, and all the display configuration code is now part of Muffin instead of being handled by XRender. The main change this brings is that you now get a more consistent looking set of apps between applications that use title bars and applications that use header bars. Previously, they used two different themes, the header bar apps used the GTK theme, and the title bar apps used the window manager theme based on the old Metacity themes. Something that will sound very familiar to all the GNOME 2 users. Those were the good old days of the human Ubuntu theme. Yeah, I had a lot less grey in my beard and a lot more hair on my head. Those were better times. So, to get back to the topic at hand, basically all windows on Cinnamon will now use the GTK theme and shadows to decorate either their header bars or their title bars, which means that the window manager themes are dropped and aren't used anymore. So everything is more consistent, but you also can't choose to have title bars looking different than what the GTK theme provides. What? They removed customization options? Is Mint the new GNOME? Another change this brings is that GTK anti-aliasing is now used for all windows, and since it's much crisper than the Metacity one, rounded corners should look better on all windows. 
Window animations are also much improved and look cleaner and perform better, but here again you lose some customization as you can't tune them as much and you can't create your own. But you still can change the global animation speed. Cinnamon now uses a more up-to-date GNOME JavaScript interpreter, so performance should be better all around, and you can right-click an app in the main menu to display its jump list, just like it already appeared in the taskbar. You already could uninstall apps from that right-click menu, but now it should be safer with a check to make sure nothing else depends on that specific app. And if something does, the uninstallation won't proceed. And finally, there's improved support for hybrid graphics system, which means that when you select to move to either an NVIDIA GPU or the integrated Intel GPU, you'll now see a message informing you that it's taking place, and so you can cancel if you change your mind. Oh, and there's initial support for GTK4 in the Mint Y and Mint X themes, and the Mint X theme has been redesigned to support applications that use dark mode. There's nothing groundbreaking in the new Cinnamon 5.4 in Linux Mint 21. It's still X11 only, so absolutely no Wayland support, but it's still super efficient, it looks good, it's easy to use, it's fast, and now it's even faster with a better window manager. So yeah, Cinnamon just got better, and the only trade-off is removing customization options for animations and title bars, which, in my opinion, is really worth it. Now, let's take a look at what changed on the default apps for Linux Mint, or X apps, as they call them. First, there's a new thumbnailer app that integrates with basically everything that displays thumbnails. And this means that you can now preview a lot more file types, like app images, EPUBs, MP3s, raw photos, and WebP. This should be mainly noticeable in the file manager. The Sticky Notes app gained the ability to duplicate notes, and it will now cycle through all note colors as you create them. So you won't ever get two notes using the same color in a row. The Sistray icon for this application was also restyled, and clicking it will now create a new note if none exists. Oh, and new notes will now be better positioned relative to their parent. Cinnamon also gets a new process monitor in the notification tray, and this little applet will now inform you when there are updates available, or when automated updates are being applied, and even when a time shift snapshot is currently running. This applet will only show itself when one of these tasks is running, so it won't clutter your tray when it's not needed. So now, when your computer starts to slow down to a crawl, you can just peek in the bottom right corner and see that it's actually doing something. It will not make the slowdown more fun or more manageable, but at least you know why it's happening. Speaking of time shift, it's now a default Mint app, and it's maintained by the Mint team. It got a few improvements, notably to calculate the remaining disk space and what disk space is required to create a new snapshot so it basically won't completely fill your disk. XViewer, the file viewer, has improved directory browsing and will now display a smooth slideshow if you keep pressing the right or left arrow, leaving you enough time to preview each image. The Web App Manager also now supports more browsers and more parameters, so you can create your web apps more easily and how you like them. And finally, the Bluetooth utility has been replaced by Blueman, which has a more complex GUI, but also provides a lot more options and tools to handle your Bluetooth devices. It's also received a bit of work to make it prettier with symbolic icons and a small user interface revamp. Here again, only incremental improvements, there is nothing groundbreaking. But on the other hand, the X apps from Mint were already a very complete collection with a ton of utilities, a ton of features, and they didn't really need many bigger updates. Okay, let's move on to Linux Mint 21 Mate edition. And yes, it is pronounced Mate, like the weird tea-like leaves that you can drink, not Mate. It's not an Australian distro, it's not an Australian desktop. Mint 21 Mate benefits from the same improvements as its cinnamon counterpart. It's got all the same apps that are also up to date, including Time Shift, the sticky notes, the new Bluetooth utility, the new system applets, the main menu right-click options, basically everything we just discussed, except for the Muffin window manager because Mate doesn't use that. So you're not getting the improvements to anti-aliasing, performance, animations, and the like. Mint 21 uses Mate 1.26, which is the latest release, but dates from a year ago, from August 2021. So if you were using Mint 20 Mate Edition, you basically already have everything that Mint 21 has to offer, 
apart from the updated apps and the newer internals. So yeah, for Mate users, the main reason to upgrade is if you want newer repos and a newer kernel. The rest is basically unchanged compared to what you were using. But I guess that's also kind of the point of Mate. People that use it want to keep the GNOME 2 experience or a very lightweight desktop. They don't want things to change all the time. As per Mint 21 XFCE, it's the same story. It uses XFCE 4.16, which dates from December 2020. So if you were using Mate 20 XFCE, you already know everything there is to know about this desktop. And here again, you get all the same improvements as Mint 21 Cinnamon, except for the window manager. So all the up-to-date apps, the new applets, the right-click in the menu, the printerless, driverless, whatever, printing and scanning, not printerless. Basically, everything will be up-to-date. Basically, everything else will be up-to-date and your desktop will be the exact same as it's been for almost two years, which is probably how XFC users like it as well. So, let's address the main question. Since Mint 20.3, which was released about seven months ago, what has Mint 21 changed? And the answer is not much. Compared to a regular six month update to GNOME or to KDE, the changes list in Cinnamon isn't huge. There's a nice window manager update and a few apps gained a bit more capabilities, but it's not big. And still, Cinnamon on Mint offers one of the most complete out of the box Linux experiences for advanced users or beginners, the sheer number of utilities, graphical tools and features in any of their apps mean that they don't really need huge updates or huge new things. Would I like to see the panel management improved and be a bit more drag and drop and a bit less interacting with the list? Sure. Would I like to see a revamp of the default theme which still looks a bit dated in my opinion? Yes. Would I like to see the software center support Flatpak better and look nicer? Obviously, but in terms of pure features, I can't find anything in Mint that is missing. What might end up dethroning Mint is the fact that they're relatively behind in terms of supporting the new Linux desktop stack. Wayland is still nowhere to be seen and there haven't been any reports of any work being done on that front, at least no public announcement. On laptops, there are no gesture support at all, neither in the apps themselves or on the desktop. The software center looks very dated compared to its GNOME or KDE counterparts. It doesn't merge the same apps from Flatpak remotes and the repos in a single listing. And it doesn't provide permissions for Flatpaks either. All of this adds up and while the default experience is still pretty good, and the distro itself is very stable, it has great support online, and it's really easy to get to grips with. I'm afraid it's really starting to be left in the dust in terms of more modern features. If Mint is to be one, if not the most recommended distro for beginners, it needs to provide the modern features that a lot of users expect. It's basically the first impression many people will get with Linux. And in my opinion, a better Flatpak integration for always up-to-date apps, including the default apps, touchpad gestures on laptops, and better multi-monitor support like what Wayland brings are expected features or will be very soon. So yeah, for now, in 2022, I would still say that Linux Mint is probably one of the best experiences for Linux newcomers. But in 2024, when they move to their next LTS, if the feature set I just mentioned isn't supported, I think we'll have to look for another flagship. Just like it's time to find a new device. For example, one that is made by today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany. They make Linux laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. You can choose from a selection of popular distros or you can just pick it up and install your own distro on it because it's going to be perfectly supported. And if there are a few tweaks needed here and there to ensure that everything works perfectly smoothly, they have PPAs and repos that you can add to your distro to install everything that they contribute. So basically, you're golden. Their range of devices is pretty huge, from small ultrabooks to giant gaming towers or gaming laptops like the Stellaris 15 that I use to edit all of my videos nowadays. Every single model is configurable with a wide variety of RAM, CPU, SSD, you can even have your own logo laser etched on the case or on the lid of the laptop. 
It's just very, very customizable. So there is something for every price point and every need. And they ship worldwide and they have all keyboard layouts. So if you need a new device and you want to ensure that you support Linux development and that Linux will run really well on your computer, then head over to the link in the description below and grab yourself a new Tuxedo device. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's that button that clicks down, the dislike button. But also write a comment. It's just more polite to tell me why you didn't like it. Come on. And if you really enjoy the channel and what I'm doing, you can also support me by clicking on the super thanks button underneath the video or the PayPal link in the description or by becoming a Patreon supporter or YouTube member. Both of them get access to an exclusive weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!